a lot of us will know that certain levels of iman don't come back very often. Okay. And for that level of iman to be grow to be to be made to you know be, to be nurtured is important. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu brothers and sisters we're here back on the MXP and we've got Ustad Yaseen here today Marhaban How you doing brother? Alhamdulillah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu So first and foremost as is the norm on this show we start off how we met Okay Do you remember the first time we met? The first time we met in real life? Yeah the first time I met in real life, I think it was in Masjid al-Sunnah, was it? So do you actually remember that day though? Yeah, I remember that day. Because I, rem- I actually remember seeing you. Yeah, I remember you sitting at the back right and I was sitting at the front. I was sitting on the side behind, yeah. Yeah, and I looked behind me. I had bad right. manners that day. I didn't know about the importance of sitting forward. I don't know, I can't remember. I was basically, I was sitting down. No, it wasn't Salah time. No, f- t- for the uh, for the teacher. It's the Dhamman's one? Yeah. The Kitab al Fitan. It was dead. No, it wasn't Kitab al Fitan. It was another thing. No, it was the poetry from Half al Hakimi or something like that. Mimiya? No, not Mimiya. Sorry, it wasn't Half al Hakimi. But it was a poetry he was going through. He didn't turn up that day. Oh, he didn't turn up. He I didn't turn I remember up that looking, day. Yeah, okay. I looked back and I saw you there on my right side corner. I, 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 saw you and I, heard, I heard about this brother called Yasin. <laughs> I heard about him sitting right there. I think <laughs> that was when he was in college. He was 18. Yeah, that was, that was a very long time ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah. We didn't speak that day, did we? We did, we did. Give you salam. Remember, I introduced the one brother to you because he wanted to bring you somewhere. Okay. Uh, uh, that's what. That's the reason. I'm. Th- yeah, I introduced one brother to you. No, but that's not when we met. I think. We, uh, that's when we met. That was that the first time we met. Before that, we were talking or something. We were talking no, before that. We spoke after that when you sent me a message on Facebook. Was that before? I think that was before. No, the Facebook thing. Well, I was after. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it was after. It was after because we met. Salam, salam. Then I think you must have gone to Egypt now or Saudi. Uh, and yeah, from yeah. there You sent me a message You sent me a nice Did I ever tell you about this? He sent me a nice message Basically it was like Sometimes I never used to have a beard And I used to trim it low So he goes to me uh, He sent me a long message He's like uh, <laughs> You said um, You didn't know that I used to be able to start Abdurrahman in times Did you? No I didn't He didn't So he sent, he sent me a message He said Salaam alaikum brother Hope you're well I just wanted to basically Reach out to you And just share something with you I used to have a teacher Basically, he's advised me, but look how he's advised me. Such a nice way because I used to have a teacher. Well, I was so beloved to me. His name was Ustad Abdul Rahman. Mm. He was uh, Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan. Well, like, he benefited me so much in my life. You know, da 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 da. And, you know, he shared something with me when I was young. The importance of growing the beard and not shaving the beard. I was just going to say, Akhil, like, you know, grow, grow your beard, innit? Yeah. It was, I, still, it was, it was, I still got that Facebook message. And I sent still? it to you recently. Remember I sent you it recently? Sent it to me, I sent it recently. Yeah, well, like, it was it was such like, a nice message. Yeah, it was a good cool. well, like, I started to grow it after that. Alhamdulillah. And then the next time he messaged me was one time I must have put up a video. I don't know if you remember, but I must have put up a little video. I was re- I was reading the first few lines of Al Baykuniya. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. I saw I must have commented saying, uh, <laughs> "Your beard this? looks nice." Someone said, "Your beard looks nice." I said that. You, you said that. No, yeah. I said you like a lion or something. Something like that. And then someone commented saying, "What is this?" And you were like, "It's Baykuniya or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember, that. I remember that one. And then obviously we met in Saudi. Yeah, we came we met in Saudi. Bra with the brothers. No, we met in Kitab Al Fitan. Or was that that was when I was in Saudi? Kitab al Fitan was Saudi. That was that was before. That was that was not like proper meeting though. Yeah. So we hung out in Saudi. Remember the trip when yeah. the brothers come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, not, yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. You and the brothers Saudi yeah, Rahman and your dad. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was a nice trip. Yeah, but anyway, Alhamdulillah, and then you know we connected. Mashallah, Allah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, so today I want to just inshallah just explore your mind a bit. Okay. So you started to uh, you know travel to seek knowledge, but you were studying before you went. Okay. Mm. Something interesting here, which I want to kind of bring to the attention of the brothers, is that you actually spent a lot of time seeking knowledge in this country before you even traveled, right? Yeah, alhamdulillah. So, what's the benefit of that? Because we see brothers, they have a concept of, I'm going to go away, I'm going to go to Medina and study. Mm. But you don't see them coming to class here, and they don't see them putting effort here. Mm. And they have this concept of, I'm going to put effort when I go there. Mm. You see where I'm coming from? So, what's the benefit of studying here, memorizing here before you go abroad? Okay, so Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salli wa sallim ala Rasulillah, amma ba'd. Um, what I realized is a few things of, ben- of, of, of studying before you go abroad, mm. which is that a person, when he first starts to take the deen more serious, mm. or you say practicing the religion, or even making that decision to go and seek knowledge, uh-huh. he has this momentum, this high level of iman, right? Uh-huh. You have this high level of momentum. And... That level of momentum needs to be taken advantage of straight away mm-hmm. and it needs to be nurtured, in fact, at that mm-hmm. time. Because a lot of us will know that 
certain levels of iman don't come back very often. Okay. And for that level of iman to be grow to be to be made to you know be, to be nurtured is important. There and then, mm. that's the point here, because when a person if they if they say that I'm only going to go study when I go in Egypt or I'm going to go in when I go in Egypt and I'm going to do more when I go to Egypt or Saudi or whatever, you don't know that change of environment it actually changes your level of of motivation mm. and level of momentum. I mean, the environment's harder. Yeah, yeah, because right now I see I'm in the UK. I'm in my comfort zone and I'm, I've got that momentum in me. Uh. You need to take advantage of that. And that's just not just of Sukhi knowledge, that's in everything. But you need to take advantage of that because that momentum, it can go with anything changing in your life. Mm. And that could be from the things that could change in your life, which, which would make the momentum go, is changing the country. Mm. The reality of the matter is that when a lot of people, they go Egypt and they go Saudi, is that their momentum goes down. I remember when I first went Saudi, one of my teachers, he said to me, how many of you guys, when you were in your country, you used to fast every Monday and Thursday. You used to pray at night, you used to do this. But Saudi, it became a bit less, uh. right? And then obviously it becomes a bit, and then you might be able to pick yourself up and you might not be able to pick yourself up. Uh -huh. But you need to be able to ad take advantage of that initial, you know, that initial what? Uh, like boost of Iman, the initial uh, confidence or not confidence, the initial momentum that you have at yeah. the beginning. So the Prophet says, لِكُلِّ أَمْلٍ شَرَّةٍ Yeah, well, لِكُلِّ شَرَّةٍ فَتْرَةٍ Exactly, because when you have the hype moment, you take advantage yeah. of it. And also, this is some of the advice, uh, the, the scholars, they give, they give this advice. When you have that high level of momentum, don't wait. When you feel like, like imagine you're, 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 something happens to you one day and it just makes you, your Iman goes. Whether it's something bad or something good, it happens to you and it makes your Iman goes up, go up a lot. And you think, I'm going to pray tonight. And then, when you're about to go and pray, you think, I could do it tomorrow, don't worry. Uh. Don't ever delay it. Because that momentum might not be there you know tomorrow. That's so true, that even happens is, you know the Sunan al rawatib Yeah. The person will say, I'm going to pray it in about 10 minutes, half an hour, or just before Asr kicks in. And yeah. then you find, you prayed Asr, you prayed Maghrib, you missed it. And you missed it, exactly. Yeah, well, that's true. So you take advantage of that time. Oh, so, that, so seeking knowledge whilst you're, whilst you're in the UK, it actually helped. And that's what I realized personally, is that the... Things that I was personally to see to get done in myself mm. in the UK was a lot more than I was able to get done in, let's say, Egypt um, from certain angles. Not all angles, but from certain angles. So that's quite interesting because you're saying you actually managed from some areas to do more in the UK. Exactly, yeah. So for example, what are some of the things that you studied here? Because you studied, you actually memorized a lot more tune here before you went, right? Uh, some things, yeah, alhamdulillah. Some, yeah, some things, alhamdulillah. So from here, I was able to memorize, like obviously you'll be able to memorize, finish the Quran, uh -huh. memorize the Quran. We, my teacher, one of my teachers, and this is another thing as well, is that you might not find the same teacher that you have in, in the UK uh -huh. that you find in Egypt. So my teacher, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and give him Jannah, he used to make us memorize everything we study. Subhan Every book we study used to memorize it. I haven't seen that much in different countries uh, unless you get into the circles. Circle, yeah. You have to find it. You have to go. But I already have it here. Yeah. You get it? So he, may, he would make us memorize Ajrumiya in, 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 um, in, in, in grammar and Bayquniya in, in Ulum al-Hadith. He would make us memorize Manzumat al-Qawaid al-Fiqiyya, um, al-Rahabiya yeah. in inheritance, um, al-Arba'in al-Munziri fi al-Ahkam, which is 40 hadith on rulings, al-Arba'in al-Nawi. Uh, he made us memorize Tuhfat al-Atfal al-Jazariya. A lot of, no, no, we didn't make us do Kitab al but that was later on in Sulam al Wasul instead. Because okay. my teacher used to love poets, uh -huh. poem, poems. Uh -huh. So instead of, it would do Sulam al Wasul by Hafid al Hakami, uh -huh. which was also like a, it was a 300 line poetry of, of Aqeed and Tawheed. Uh -huh. So he would actually give me that structure. Uh -huh. You get it? So I benefited a lot from, from being here in many different ways that I wouldn't have benefited if I, if I went straight to Saudi or went uh -huh. straight to Egypt. You get it? Like these, these foundational things that you need. Quran, memorizing the Quran is something that you need. Mm. Memorizing Safina to Najah, you have to memorize, it will make us memorize Safina to Najah. It will make us memorize books that like poems on Aqeedah, on Fiqh, all of these things. He will make us memorize it and he will be close to us. You get it? In Saudi, if you're going there, you're gonna, it's going to take you another whole year, two mm. years to get close to a teacher like that. Mm. You get it? So I'm not trying to put anyone off, anyone off doing that, but you need to benefit from your time that you have here because of the fact that you have momentum here mm -hmm. and you have that environment that you, not, you were. You were that same environment that grew your iman mm. is the same environment that you're going to be able to yani, nurture it in a correct way. Not necessarily I'm talking about the bad part of the environment. I'm talking about that masjid that you go to, the masjid that you go to where all the brothers that you already know are there and the lessons are already there. You need to benefit whilst you're there mm. uh, from that from that momentum. You understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? Making formal sense. Really, yeah. You need to benefit from that, that, that time that you're there because that's where your iman became high. Yeah. So use that place. Don't change anything now. 
But not, not saying don't leave, don't go to a different place, but use that time where there's no changes, where your iman is still high, because you don't know that something can change in your life that will make your iman go down again. Mm -hmm. whether, that be, whether that be even the environment, uh -huh. whether that be a teacher or a life circumstance or situation that you get into. Uh -huh. You get it? So you need to take advantage of the now and then. When you uh -huh. have that momentum, take advantage of it. Uh -huh. that's, what, that's definitely what I would say for a person that's the advantage of seeking knowledge before you go. Oh, so you know Secondly, that thing that you mentioned, which is that some brothers, they say, I'm going to study in Egypt when uh -huh. I go to Egypt. Uh -huh. That's another thing, which is that that's a lie. If, you're, if you love knowledge, you're going to study it wherever you are. Yeah. There was a brother who, there's a story about a brother, um, a Russian brother, who came to um, one of the universities in Saudi, I think it was Medina University. Uh -huh. And he came and they tested him and they see this guy is actually very, very knowledgeable. So they asked him, where did you study in Russia? Well, he didn't have, there's not many, in, in where like he was living. No, no, he's Muslim because there's a lot of Muslims that are in Russia. Like Russia Chechen. Like a yeah, it's a big place. Like um, there's, there's what there's che no, the Chechen is not part of it, but Chechen used to be part of the Soviet Union, basically. Soviet Union, yeah. All of the area like used to be considered to be Russia. So they asked him, "Where did you learn?" He said, "I listened to 1,000 hours of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin." Oh wow! 1,000 hours of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin. So he took advantage. So my point is here that you're gonna learn wherever you are, well, no true. matter your situation. And you're, if you're not learning where you are, then you're not going to learn when you change your situation well, that's true. the majority of the time. Like how many people do we know in the UK, some never left the country, memorized the Quran, learned Arabic. Exactly. Then they became imams in Masajid here. Exactly. And they never once set foot outside the country. You can benefit, yeah. You, yeah like, uh, Salman al Faris, he said, Al-Ardu al -ardu la tuqaddisu ahadan. The earth doesn't purify anyone. anyone. The place, the person is the one who. He, he chooses his actions and he does what he can. Okay, also, the issue of um, having a teacher that you can really have a close relationship with is very important. Because like, mm -hmm. even Imam Shafi'i, like, his poetry, this thing always stuck with me. He said, Ya akhi, lan tanal ilma illa bi sittatin sa umbika an tafsiriha bi bayanin. But he mentions the last two, he says, suhbatul ustad. Mm -hmm. To accompany a teacher, wa tula zaman in a very long time. But that point of, he said, you will not seek knowledge unless you have these six things. From mm -hmm. them is that you have to accompany a teacher. And like you said, when you go there and you got so sometimes you have circles and there's mm -hmm. like 200 students there, how are you going to get close to him? Close to him. So that the, the, the benefit that have comes of having, because even times when, when, when we were with, with our sheikh and we were studying and benefiting with him in the UK, um, we would learn sometimes more when the lesson would end mm -hmm. than during the lesson. It's with like when the camera turns off, okay, let me just explain it to you guys one more time on the whiteboard. And yeah. then it's that extra time that you get like we got with Ustad, benefited us more than sometimes the actual yeah. within the lesson itself because there's the extra time and, and the tarbiyah element and whatnot. So definitely, definitely, I think brothers need to get out of that mindset of we're going to study when we go to Egypt, we're going to yeah. study when we go to Saudi because you're going to go to Saudi and it, when, it's, when it gets tough, you're going to start watching Netflix. Yeah, it's unfortunately. Because uh, it is. For example, like an example that I give is that in our masjid, in Masjid uh, Sunnah, we used to have this kind of program of youth, uh -huh. a group of youth. It was... They used to call it Sunnah Youth. Uh -huh. And one of the brothers who's, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him highly, he brought us all to, a lot of us together uh -huh. in that masjid. So I met his brother, right? The one you told me about that was... Um, Big Bid. He's yeah. called Big Bid. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> uh, <laughs> during, yeah, the brother Abdul Zaki was there that Ramadan. In Ramadan. Two, two years ago. In, uh, in Remember when we were all coming to North London to pray? And he came yeah. the last 10 nights. Yeah, yeah, he came last 10 nights yeah, for yeah. holiday. Because yeah, yeah, he left yeah. the country now, alhamdulillah. Yeah, 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 so he would he would gather the youth together. So you have this environment where you're not always at home doing mm -hmm. nothing. You 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 got an environment, and imagine you're in that environment five hours a day mm. or five hours a week, ten hours a week, wherever you're wherever you are. If you're in the, whilst you're in that environment, you're seeking knowledge and you're learning mm -hmm. and you're benefiting from the iman, from the brothers, from the benefits. You know, we used to just go there just to see. Or some of my teachers come, like Sad Hakim used to come to the masjid. We used to go there. So uh, someone said, Sad Hakim, the masjid, everyone would come. <laughs> we would run. But no, he wouldn't know that though. I don't know if he wants to know that. <laughs> we would come and we just go sit in the library and say, look at him. <laughs> it was funny, subhanAllah. We just go and just look at him and then ask him, Shaykh, what about this? What about that? And one of my teachers, Mal Habib, would be in the masjid. So we're looking. Every time there's someone in the masjid that you can benefit from. Mashallah. Literally, you just go to the after college, or after school, we used to go to the masjid and just look for someone to benefit from. Mashallah. So we would go and you're in this environment. If you go to another country now, for example, something, I'm not now, I don't want to make, make it look like I'm making the other countries look bad. No, there's big benefits of other countries. But my point is that the difference between two countries. Yeah. In the other country now, like you, have to you don't have that same, you. yeah, you don't, you don't have that same youth program yeah. that was keeping you in check. Yeah. yeah, That youth program was actually keeping you in check from being own, at home all the time and watching Netflix. We didn't exactly. have Netflix back in those days, but you know, 
they like they, here you have the brothers that will call you to come check up for yeah you. they'll call you there's an event yeah. there's this happening you get it but there and you don't have that there you, you don't, don't have, have that now, now you're by yourself now it's hot it, it is hot that's the one yeah a lot of things sad family loneliness yeah well i honestly every year i get lonely i used to i used to get lonely in saudi like especially <laughs> one time in it I didn't message. I messaged. I messaged you. He was like, I'm feeling. I'm feeling a bit lonely still. I don't know, man. I, I told you this. I thought you when you came, did. when you came, and you guys twisted it in yeah, a different yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> Allah, it's not in a bad way, but in, yeah. a, in a different way. So I, I literally Sorry, you're married now. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> That's that wasn't the reason why though. <laughs> they thought I needed to get married. Yeah, I'm telling them I'm just feeling a bit lonely. Like you know, it's because he's skin. He said things a certain Bro, way. Like, the way I said it, yeah, it made me feel like they, they thought like I'm trying to get married. But in my, in my, the way what I mean by lonely is that he I just family. feel no, not even just family. I just feel a bit lonely in it. Cause like, you say all day sometimes you don't you don't speak to someone for a whole day. Yeah, I don't speak to people for three four days. Is that hard I, mentally? No, it's not. I love it. Personally, really? I mean, I love Cause it. Cause even me, I I I I I, I fantasize about things like that. As in, not speak to anyone for for a week. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay, well, I honestly like sometimes I, don't, I go a whole day without opening my mouth speaking. But some people to say that's like mentally like can mess you up. Is that true? Or? Ah, that's psychological people in it, but yeah. they even say you need certain amount of sleep, but yeah. you know, some people don't need that amount of sleep. Yeah. Well, I would love to be able to go seven days straight and not speak to a human being. Yeah, sometimes, well, I honestly, like, I'm literally in Mecca. I there well, was just going cl- class, leaving. Yeah, I'm, class. I'm in the house by myself, I'm in the class, and me, yeah, I wouldn't even speak to someone, give salam to people, and then leave. Or sometimes I wouldn't even speak to anyone. It was it's very good, it's lovely. I, lo- I loved yeah. it, but that's not, that's not what I mean by lonely. You get it? Like, sometimes you get there and you're just a bit lonely, just like, ah. Oh. What am I doing now? Just, but it is, I asked Sheikh Saleh Rasaymi, my teacher, I asked him, Sheikh, sometimes I get this, what should I do? He said, busy yourself with knowledge. MashaAllah. So I was like, okay, let me try it. So when you busy yourself with knowledge, you give yourself another, because you just come back from UK and your timetable's messed up. Uh-huh. Or you're just about to leave the UK and your yeah. timetable's messed up. So normally uh, you feel this feeling at the beginning and at the end, because when your timetable gets messed up. But when you busy yourself with knowledge and you give yourself a timetable again, it comes back, you know, you don't feel it anymore. So what was the point I was making? I was making that. You're leaving the UK where you have this 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 um, circle, to a place where you have no circle now. So are you going? To, some people because of that they're not going to be able to do the same things that they were doing when they had that circle right now. For example, right now in the UK you have um, a youth program and or, or, or lessons and you have a friend and you're competing with that friend. When you go back when you go to that country that you haven't got that friend anymore, you're going to be by yourself and that competition is not any you know, there anymore. So the only thing that's, that's that's pushing you now is your own, inshallah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you from hard work and your own um, determination. And that can go down naturally as a human being, it can go down. So this transition, it actually can affect someone in a bad way. Mm. That's why I personally take advantage of that circle that they have. That same environment that your iman grew, you need to nurture your iman uh, there and then, mm-hmm. whilst you're there. You need to nurture it because you might be in a situation where your iman is no longer on that same level or you don't have those same fati- facilities or environment to build the iman. Hmm. If that doesn't make sense. No, of course. Does it? Of course. It of makes course. Sense. Okay. Of course. Alhamdulillah. So Alhamdulillah. on the issue of loneliness, I just want to expand on that a little bit more. Mm. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he described the believers as strangers. Mm. The Prophet Ali Sallallahu he said, Fatuba al mm. Glad tidings to those who are strangers. Mm. Imam Nawi Ta'ala mentioned Tawba means, as you know, uh, glad tidings in this life and the next mm. for the strangers. And the Sahab of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they asked Man al-Ghuraba, who are these strangers in many different narrations. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described them in different ways, but ultimately the Prophet alaihi wasallam described them as people who are holding on to the Deen, um, and they're very few in number. They're actually little in number. Mm. We actually have a nas from the Prophet alaihi wasallam. We said that because nowadays people they try to make it out to seem as if uh, the truth is. With the majority mm. and those who uh, are a minority have like a minority complex or something mm-hmm. like that. Like in one of the narrations, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually mentioned unasun qalilun, mm. unasun salihun qalilun mm. fi nasin su'in kathirin. Mm. They are a small minority of people that mm. are very good. They're righteous, mm. and they are amongst very evil people, and they are Imagine. they are the majority. So this. This concept of loneliness, yeah. Even the Salaf al-Salih, they spoke about it. Mm. Mentioned, you know, don't, 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 don't feel, don't let the loneliness of being upon the haq be something that drives you away from 
you know, staying with the jama'ah. Yeah, look at the path. Look, look at those at people path. who look at the people who tread that path before, before you, you. Not those people who are not on it with exactly. you. Exactly. To the point where Sufyan Authority, Rahmanullah Taala, would say that if you hear of a man who is upon the Sunnah and he's in the East, send salam to him, because the Ahlu Sunnah is very very rare. Mm. So if you hear of a person, send it out to them. So explain to us what does it really mean to be a stranger, and what are the different Darajat, the levels of being a stranger Because Ibn Qayyim has a beautiful narration mm. In his Madarij as sadiqeen Where mm. he mentions the You know Like You know Sometimes you're a stranger mm. I, All Muslims are strangers With regards to the, the no Kufar Muslim, yeah. Right mm. They're all strangers With regards to the Kufar But, was, but, but, but within the Muslims mm. some you, Like you're, strangers. you're a stranger to other mm. Muslims yeah. So mm. how, like, break it down for us um, So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, فَلَوْلَا كَانَ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ أُلُوا بَقِيَّةٍ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْفَسَادِ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّنْ أَنْجَيْنَا مِنْهُمْ He says, in the previous nation, this is something that Isma Abu, um, Abu Sheikh al-Islam, Abu, Abu Ismail al-Harawi, uh-huh. the original writer of the book. You know, Madarj al-Salikin is an explanation of yeah. the Kitab Manazil al-Sairin uh-huh. by, Abu, by Abu Ismail al-Harawi, al-Harawi who Ibn Taymiyyah actually calls Sheikh al-Islam uh-huh. in his books. And the explanation of Madaraj Salikin is the, by Ibn Qayyim is the explanation of that book. Uh-huh. In it, he mentions, and this is something Ibn Qayyim praises. He said this is from the, the, the uh, you know, the delicate kind of, or the very daqiq uh, understanding of Abu, Abu Ismail Al Harawi, which is that he took from this ayah that the people of the truth they are very little. He says, uh-huh. kana min al min qablikum ulu baqiyya. If only there were a group of people from the previous nations before you. There were a, a group of people, ulu baqiya, the remaining the people. Yanhuna uh. anil fasadi fil ard. What did they used to do? They used to pro- uh, prohibit the evil or prohibit the corruption on the earth. Uh-huh. So you find that these people, they are people who are calling to the good and they're forbidding the evil whenever they see it, uh-huh. right? Yanhuna anil fasadi fil ard. Illa qalila mimman anjina minhum. And those are the people who Allah subhanahu wa taala saved. they saved and they were qalilan. They were they, they were minority. Abu Ismail al Harawi he brings from this that the people of the truth. They are always a minority amongst the people. And Ibn, Qay- Ibn Qayyim says this ayah is from the... Uh, it's not something to e- easily understand from this ayah, except for a person who has a deep insight into yeah. the ayah. Right? So that shows that the people who are forbidden the, the, the evil, they're always going to be a minority amongst the people. And the levels of that, as you mentioned, is from the Muslims to the non-Muslims. The mul- Muslims are going to be... The, they're not going to be the majority of people. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be the majority. Mm-hmm. Okay? Um, you're always going to have the kuffar or more. Like uh-huh. Christians, Judaism, all, all are put together and the Muslims on one side. They are, uh-huh. The Muslims are the people of the truth. But even from amongst the Muslims, you have groups of people who are not necessarily calling to the same uh-huh. Islam that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he called to. Right? And from these people, they are, they are, they are the ghuraba uh-huh. that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about uh-huh. when um, he mentioned the people of the truth at the end of times. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And a narration it comes to mind the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he says, uh, "Bada al-Islam gariban," Islam started off as something strange. Wasayyudu gariban, and it's going to end up as something strange, meaning not a lot of people are going to be upon it. He says, "Fatuba lil ghuraba," so all good be good be, be, will be for the the strangers. Then they said, "They said, Waman lil ghuraba." Who are the ghuraba? In one narration, he says, "Humun nuzagu min al qabail." They are people who are taken from each tribe, meaning mm-hmm. they are a group of people. Who does that, that does not gather them a race, uh, a lineage doesn't gather them. Kala doesn't gather, gather them. The only thing that gathers them is the truth, is and the they are the strangers, right? They all gather them together, uh, based on their based on their aqidah and the way they yeah. they, they, they so are upon the way they're selected. Mm. So then, the strangers, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the Jama'ah, they're not racist. Saudi Arabia. Uh, of course not. Because <laughs> you could have this concept that. That mm. Salafi is just in Saudi Arabia. Arabia. No, that, that's, that's not true. Of course not. Because, wallahi, this is one of the things that Ustad Abdul Rahman used to say, mm. wallahi, which really, really shocked me. Mm. It really shocked me when I saw it manifest in front of my very own eyes. Mm. He used to really encourage us and say, go out into different places, different countries, and speak to people who are from Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah and ask them if I'm lying. Mm. As in, he would te- teach us. The manhaj, mm. and then we would say, "Go ask, go ask, mm. go ask." Okay, right? yeah, go find. Them. They'll say the same thing. Yeah, yeah. They, they, say, they say they'll say the same thing. Say because Ahlul Sunnah, wherever you go, mm. they say the same thing. When we study Aqidah Raziin, mm. he'll mention, "Look, look what he said." At the, he said, "This is the Aqidah, mm. this is the belief of what the ulama 
from the Amsar, from yeah. all of the lands. Yeah, okay. Again, when you bring up the little, the, 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 the different Rasail al Aqidah Salaf wrote, they would mention at the beginning, this is the Aqidah of the Ulama of the Amsar, yeah. the Ulama of all of the different lands, the different cities. This is what they, they, what believed. they all believed. So we never had uh, at the, uh, a teacher other than him at the time. Mm. And we, uh, for us, it was just Dalil. He's mentioned Dalil, I'm taking it. It's important, mm. it's just Dalil. And he brings me a Sahabi who understood it in that way. Evidence. I, I mean, that's it. Yeah, evidence. Mm. Uh, you know, can't really argue with that. But then when we started to travel, and we, we did travel with him. We went with him to, you know, Egypt, we went to Kuwait, we went to Saudi, we, we went to different places. And then he would always pull out people. Mm. And he would say, he would ask them questions in front of us so that we could hear mm. the response. And then we would speak to them. And it was like, wow. Everyone's saying the same thing everywhere. Mm. And then years later, I came across this statement, the one I mentioned to you, I think a few weeks ago, by Abu Madhafra Sanani. Mm. He mentioned this is one of the proofs that mm. Ayah Sunnati wal Jama'ah is upon the Haqq. Mm. Why? Because he said, if you see a people that never met, mm. they don't speak the same language, they live in different times, yet they're all saying the same thing and they're not contradicting, mm. the fact that there's consistency in what they believe and what their, what their aqidah is, is a proof they're on the truth. And they brought the ayah from Surah, Surah Al-Nisa, where Allah said, had this Qur'an mm. been from anyone else other than Allah, la wajadu fihi ikhtilafan kathira. You would have found inside of it many contradictions, many inconsistencies. Mm. Like the Qur'an would have been Inconsistent mm. There's no contradictions mm. So the fact that you go to people Upon the sunnah Everyone Every land You go to India They're there You go to Egypt They're there You go to Somalia You're there You go to Gambia They're there You go to Malaysia They're there You find the real Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah They never met Some of them never even met Never even studied under Any Saudi sheikh mm -mm. But they're saying the same thing mm. They're saying the same thing This is a proof That when you find consistency Consistency is true mm. Maybe I, I understand where you're coming from But Don't you think that The Scholars of innovation They also say something that No because they're not consistent mm. In the past like, They did change so. no, th no think about it mm. the, For example The mutakallimin mm. Their asl is what? Uh, aqal, the aqal. The, the intellect yeah. Everyone's intellect is what? Different and it, huh? Sorry so, 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 so by default The place where they're picking up Their aqidah from yeah, Is different. never going to be consistent yeah, so. Others do it on emotion Never consistent mm -mm -mm. They're never consistent so. That's why you, they, you can never find two of them that agree Even when they sit on panels together Where they have this false sense of unity mm. <laughs> <laughs> They appear to be united But their hearts are scattered in different directions <laughs> Sorry but that was beautiful Because that narration yeah, you mentioned, that. Well, I, I, I didn't, I, mm. I didn't come across that one. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're different. They're different tribes. They're not different tribes. They're different people. Mm. So they, they are first of all, they're, they're people <coughs> who are they're, they're strange, mm. which means they're not they're not amongst people who they are looked at to be minority who are you know shed the, 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 as the, the a lot of people they use the hadith man shed the shed the finnar yadullahi ala al jamaa hand of Allah is upon the jamaa yeah. man shed the whoever leaves it. Then he's in the hellfire mm. And they think that it means the majority When well, it doesn't mm. mean the majority Right So This hadith It shows that The strangeness Of Al-Islam Is something that Doesn't show That it's the Wrong path No doubt mm. It shows that the, 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 So someone to use As an evidence That the people of Or this group of people They're a little Or they're just A you know, uh, split. What well, a split group, something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, they're, they're a group, fringe group, a fringe group. Yeah. who just split off. Yeah. Right. They say they, they, therefore they're upon the they're not upon the truth. Is not a correct evidence to show they're not upon the truth. Of course. Rather, if anything, it shows that they're more likely. It doesn't mean that they are. They are. It shows that they're more likely, likely to be upon the truth if they are. A. Eh? Rather, the yardstick is delil. Is evidence Fakhar. exactly? Yeah. If they if they are upon the truth, then it doesn't matter how many they are. Yeah. As Ibn Mas'ud radiAllahu anhu said. Uh, you're on, you are the jama'ah Even if you're by yourself Meaning if you're upon The way of the companions Of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So then this concept When they say That um, uh, You know They're opposing the majority And mm. you know You're just A bunch of people That have this belief Inside of this room But look, everyone can't be wrong It's all false It's all batil It has no basis mm. in our religion mm. Is it that's n that's yeah. It has no it has no basis. Of, using the majority as a proof is not is not um, correct. Because if the and this is very important because if having a majority of people being upon guidance was a proof, then that means there were prophets that failed. Yeah, so. because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ra'itu nabi wa ma'ahu arrahat." When nabi wa ma'ahu arrajul, huh? Yeah. Barrajulan. When nabi wa laysa ma'ahu ahad. 
I saw a message, I saw a prophet because he was shown sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the nations. He said, I saw a prophet who had with him a group of people that's up to like nine people, three to nine people, right? Mm. Or w one who had one or two and one who had no one. And those prophets, you can't say they failed. Mm -hmm. You can't say that they were misguided because they were the only ones alive at that time. Okay. So wallahi, that concept is deceptive. I was actually amazed that Imam Al-Ajuri actually wrote a whole kitab on this issue. Mm, he wrote a whole book on the issue of the Quraba because and the narrations that he brings and mm. even uh, Ibn Rajab has a kitab on this and the Athari mm. he brings from the Salaf, like, they really used to take this issue serious, like remind mm. the people, remind the people. They listen, know. yeah, don't 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 feel saddened, you know, because of the small amount of people that are upon the truth. Yeah. Don't feel saddened based on that. Because it's so imagine like you've got an ocean of people that are telling you you're wrong. Mm -mm. It'll make you doubt yourself. Even look, if we got liberalism today here. Yeah. Liberalism today here where people are everyone's everyone's smoking, everyone's doing whatever mm -hmm. they're doing. A person who's practicing he's seen as someone who is mm -hmm. gharib, someone strange, right? Mm -hmm. So even that person that can put what the weakness in Iman in, in him, uh -huh. he needs to be reminded of this hadith as well. Yeah. That this person, you are someone who upon the truth, when there are millions of people unasun, so in Kathir, mm -hmm. the people who are evil people around you are a lot, and you're the only person, or you're the only group of people who are actually sticking to the religion of mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should, these hadith should also give comfort to that of person course, as well. I know that person who's um, calling to Al Islam that is correct, the way the Salaf they called to, mm -hmm. he shouldn't be put off or phased by people saying that you're the only ones doing this, or you're just mm -hmm. a small group of people who are doing this. That should not be what phases you. What should phase you if you if you if you go against the evidence? That's the Did I go against the evidence? No. But you, if, he, if he says no, but you just no one else does it, then he says then how? you have you have you have um, imitated your the fall of the Mushrikun who used to say inna wajadna ala abaana ala ummatin wa inna ala atharihim muqtadun. So we found our fathers upon something, so we're going to follow them. Just like that. that's what they're saying to you. They say well, everyone is upon this. Why are you not upon it? Right? What What about when you find brothers? Obviously, we've seen many a time there are brothers mm. who know the deal, but they just get overpowered by the sheer amount of people that are opposing them. Mm. That's just hard for them. Like what 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 is it? Why What? As in, like they know the deal, mm. but it's just hard for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, that's that's all that comes back to istiqama. You know, um, it's part of being. A person who's practicing the religion of Islam that you don't, mm. you don't succumb to pressure or mm. peer pressure. If you know that this is something that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He uh, commanded, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded, and the Salaf of this Ummah commanded, and you find that the Ulama of Ahlul Sunnah today are commanding you to do this, but you're just in a community where the, no one is doing that, mm -hmm. then this is part of, you know, um, the pressure that and the fitna of practicing the religion comes with, right? Sorry. You have to do al-amalu bihi wa da'watu wa sabra ala al adafi You have to have patience. So I'm half so happy you mentioned that because I feel like that's the issue that people don't have. Sabra ala adafi They don't have sabra ala But what they can remember to help them. So just translate that for them. Uh, they have to have patience. Patience upon, upon any harm that come to any because harm that comes to them. Because when you're a stranger and you're called into strangeness, then you're going to be harmed. Then you're going to be harmed. By the way, that's not strange to Allah. By the way, has it? It's it's, it's known to Allah. It's strange to the people. Because the the the, the, the the that statement by Ibn Qayyim that I mentioned earlier, I alluded to, Allah is very powerful. It gave me a lot of comfort in my life personally, and we hope that Allah's which makes us from the strangers. I mean, I mean um, he said that the that the Muslims are the strangers when it comes to the kuffar, mm. and amongst the Muslims, those who are upon the Sunnah mm -hmm. are strangers. Amongst no, sorry, Afwan. He said those who study who who, who seek knowledge of mm. the religion are strangers in comparison to the rest of the Muslims. Mm. And those who are upon the Sunnah and they sought knowledge are strangers when you compare them to those who seek knowledge but they're not upon the Sunnah. And then he said, even stranger are the ones who are upon the Sunnah, seek knowledge, and then they call to the Sunnah. He said they're the strangest of all. Subhanallah. They will they, they they will be ostracized by their own Sunni brothers. Subhanallah. They will be yeah, ostracized true. by their own Sunni brothers. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. some people can't take the heat or whatever have you. And then he says something so powerful, like, and this I think every Muslim who, whether it be a sister who's wearing her jilbab, her niqab, or brother with his lihya, going to the masjid, you know, okay, well, like, we are, think about it, we're strange people. The Muslims are yeah, strange people, like, exchange. in the morning, everyone's sleeping, you're walking to Fajr in the masjid in the cold, like, everyone's sleeping. What you, like, no. you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. it, it's just strange. Like, it really is strange. Like, you're in Mecca. Mm -hmm. Three days you're not talking to no one. Yeah. Back and forth from lessons and salah. Like that's that's considered strange. But yeah. it's, it's 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 not strange to Allah. And that's what he said at the end. He said, Rather, these people, they are very familiar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on it is these people who see them as strangers that in actual reality are strange to Allah. Subhanallah. They are strange to Allah. Mm -hmm. Those people, that innovator or that fasiq or fajr or that kafir. And he's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again? He's doing something wrong. Yeah, he's doing yeah. something yeah. wrong. So that is 
that is to Allah something that he's he, he doesn't like. He's yeah. displeased with. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. But one encouragement that you can find, subhanAllah, man, when you mentioned that, that, that I, I never thought of that as strangeness, to be honest. I'll tell you honestly, I never thought speaking, not speaking to people was strange. <laughs> I never thought it was strange. Well, okay. You know why? Because these guys are texting. Yeah, it's something they have to do. So, but when you, someone. now you mentioned it, I, just something that came to my mind, subhanAllah, is that that sweetness of having that connection to Allah, it overcomes that strangeness. Or that, that being strange and I never because I never thought of that and you know there's the Athar of Ibn al-Mubarak where he mentions and he says they see him he's in his house uh-huh. and he says they say to him why are you always in your house do you not get lonely he said I'm with Allah and his messenger and his companions Subhanallah. right so يعني, an encouragement for those people who feel like maybe you're ostracized by your community you're trying to leave bad friends and you're going to good friends you're going to be it's going to be hard for you or you're trying to Call up the people to the path of Allah. You're trying to seek knowledge. You're going to look strange. People are going to call you to football, and you're going to say, "No, I got Quran to memorize." You got, well, honestly, it <laughs> happens. Right? Yeah, people are going to call you to do stuff, but you're going to be memorizing the Quran. You're going to look strange. But there's two things that c- can encourage you. Number one is that sweetness that you're going to have when you're when you're actually getting close to Allah. That that sweetness of iman that you can't feel it feel it with anything other than believing in the dhikr of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But also, that is the the the, the jannah that you're going to get in this dunya. But also the reward that is waiting for you in the akhirah as narrated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said that these people um, فَإِنَّ مِنْ وَرَائِكُمْ أَيَّامًا الصَّبْرُ فِيهِ أو أَيَّامُ الصَّبْرِ uh, الْأَجْرُ أو أَيَّامُ أَيَّامُ أَيَّامًا الصَّبْرُ فِيهِ كَالْقَبْضِ عَلَى الْجَمْرِ There are different narrations. Um, this one is Tirmidhi. He says, الصَّبْرُ فِيهِ كَالْقَبْضِ عَلَى الْجَمْرِ لِلْعَامِلِ فِيهِنَّ مِثْلُ أَجْرِ خَمْسِينَ مِنْكُمْ He said that the person who holds on to the, the, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day it's so hard for them to hold it on that it is like holding on to hot coals. Have you ever recently I stepped on hot coal, subhanAllah, by accident? Really? Where? No, I didn't even step on the hot coal. You I stepped so- on sand where coal was being burnt on, ah. and then I stepped on it and it burnt my foot, subhanAllah. And it reminded me, imagine that's not the coal, that's the sand on the hot ah. coal. Imagine the hot coal holding on to it. How hard it would be, right? Holding on to the deen, the Prophet sallallahu said it's going to be that hard. And think about your own life when you're listening to this. Um, when was it hard for me to hold on to my religion? It was almost that hard. Like mm. it was that. Like for example, when your own parents may have been saying bad things Against to you, your, your own friends your own that you friends. your whole life. That's that's like holding on to hot coals even harder. So the reward for that person is fifteen fifty. The the is is the same reward or is yeah naam is the same reward of a sahabi and a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam doing a good deed. Allah. What's the reward of the sahabi doing a good deed? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. Um, uh, for wallahi law anfaqa ahaduhum mithla uhudin dhahaba ma balagha mudda ah no law anfaqa ahadukum mithla uhudin dhahaba ma balagha mudda ahadihim walaw nasi walaw nasifa wala nasifa wala nasifa he said if you were to spend one mountain of gold the uhud how big is uhud in 10 kilometers very wide how many com- I, think, twice, sorry. I think you mentioned it one time. I don't know. Someone uh, uh, like four or five kilometers. Four or like five kilometers of I'm, gold. Uh, yeah, it seems that's like it. trillions that's of pounds, right? Yeah. Probably, uh, probably trillions lot, of pounds. If you spent all of that in gold and charity, it wouldn't be like a companion giving a handful of rice. Imagine you give a handful of rice. Why? Because of his, like, his iman that's that he has. Lot, yeah. That person who's holding on to the rope of Allah, despite it being hard for him, yeah. it's like holding on to a hot coal. He's going to be given the reward of the companion. 50 of the companions It doesn't mean he's better than companions by the way yeah. But it means 50 rewards of the companions Given that, that amount of, of rice mm-hmm. How big is that reward? Right, so the reward that's w- waiting for you Ayyuh al For the person who's a stranger Is number one in the dunya That leather, that sweetness You feel happy you, You're connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And number two The akhirah The reward in the akhirah You know That's just that point you mentioned also You know just to kind of help people c- Become for people, you know, who are going through this ghurba themselves, the strangers that they're experiencing, some of them amongst their own family members in their own households. Um, there's a story that is mentioned uh, about Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Mm. His, his, his wife, Fatima, she was a princess. Mm. Uh, daughter of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, right? Something like that. Something like that. Mm. <laughs> and uh, she was raised in royalty. Mm. She was a very righteous woman, though, because mm. when Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he took the khilafah, he said to her, listen, listen, you you don't I I will not be able to give you your rights now as a husband because I have to serve the Muslims uh, I have been entrusted with this responsibility so you can leave if you want I give you permission you know and we can annul this marriage or whatever or whatever have you she said no I'll stay with you hmm. and Umar Abdul Aziz was a zahid mm. you know, this man he 
would turn after he'd finished doing the work for the uh, for the Islamic affairs at night the candle he'd had to blow it off so. because he would say this money is from what it's from the Baytul Mal al Muslimin so this is for the the, the Muslim treasury and, and now I've done the the work and in my own house my personal affairs I'll stay in darkness mm-hmm. so he's a very very righteous man do you understand now one day he walked in on his wife and she put up with that by the way she mm. put up with all that but one day this righteous woman even she couldn't take it no more because of his level mm. he walked in on her she was making dua saying oh Allah rid us of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and the I remember Sad mentioned this point when he said this to us he said look at the ghurba mm. he reached his own bedroom subhanallah the strangeness he was a stranger in his own bedroom huh? so imagine walking in your wife akhi She's and she's not a bad woman. She's a righteous woman, Akhi. Mm. She's not. She's, not, she's not, But it's just your commitment to the deed. She looks at you and she's, she's like, Allah, oh, this man's too, too much. Yeah. Subhanallah. Right. Your own, so, your own so, family. So, 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 your own family. Your own family. So then the point here is people have been for it before you. Mm. They've been for it before you. And it was worse for them. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It was worse for them. So if you stay firm on the sunnah, and the sunnah is the way of the companions. The way of the companions. There's no way. There's no way that you can say I follow the Sunnah if you're not a person who follows the Salaf. Mm. Salaf meaning companions and the students because you never met the Prophet. Ali so so the one who brought the, the Islam to you. Yeah, the ones who brought it to you was the Salaf. They brought mm. it to you. So the way you trust them, you know, with the riwayah, mm. you trust them with the wording of the hadith. You trust Bukhari with the wording of the hadith, right? That's why you go to Sahih al Bukhari because you mm. trust him with the wording of the hadith. Mm. Trust him with the meaning as well. Mm. Trust him with the understanding and interpretation. Mm. So as long as you, upon that, Allah, you have that, uh, have that safety. It's this life and the next. No doubt. But I barak Allah fi Do you have any f- last words to share with the people? This may be Allah knows best the last time we see you, even though we hope to see you much more after Inshallah. this. Inshallah. Um, but you know, you never know. You might decide Inshallah. to run away to uh, <laughs> Barawa or something. No, really. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, when these brothers start hopping countries, they, they don't, they don't stop. <laughs> Some brothers, uh, he still haven't come back. <laughs> Just Allah, my advice is, for those brothers who, because the beginning of, of this whole podcast was about brothers who are seeking knowledge, mm. and they're here in this country, right? And they're they're taking that path of, uh, or even seeking, or even practicing, is that take advantage of your of your level of iman. Don't mm. ever um, let that level slip without taking full advantage of it. Mm. Just like when you're feeling very, you know, you want to pray, get up and pray. Mm. Obviously, as long as it's not waktu nahi, get up and pray, right? What's what the, the times the you're not allowed to pray yeah. right? after Asr and until Maghrib and after Fajr and until Zawal. Then the end Zawal and after Fajr until the sun rises. So get up and pray, you know, <laughs> make dua, you know, make a long, su- you're feeling to do a long sujood, do a long sujood. You're feeling to seek knowledge, do it and get get a consistent, get a consistent um, timetable or consistent lessons and teachers that you're able to get close to and benefit as much as you can because a person who wants knowledge and a person who wants good for himself He's going to do it no matter where he is. Mm. And the earth, wherever you are, is not going to change you. There are people who, um, as Salman al-Farisi mentioned, Al-Ardu la ahadan. the earth is not going to make anyone holy. Yeah. It's not going to purify anyone, the yeah. earth, where you are. Whether you're in Mecca or al Medina or in Bayt al-Maqdis in Jerusalem, or you're in the UK, a person, the righteous person is still a righteous person. Mm-hmm. And the person who's evil is still an evil yeah. person, whether they're in Mecca or Medina. Right? So... Take advantage of that of that period of of, of, of of high iman and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He keeps it for you. Mm. Because and what you mentioned, subhanAllah, is amazing, man. Because you see it yourself amongst um students of knowledge, is that the people who are practicing, they're strangers amongst those people who are not practicing. But even those people who are practicing, how many of them go seek knowledge and then they fall out? They drop off. And then you have that free for I remember in my classes, we would start with thirty something people in the UK, forty people. And my teacher would teach us. By the end, we were six people. Six people. From those six people, one of one brother is in a Medina doing masters now. Allah the rest are not. Right? Allah it's like, subhanAllah, from those people who are practicing, there's the people who are seeking knowledge, they're even more strange. Allah. And then those from those who seek knowledge, as you mentioned, those people who call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are probably going to be one from a thousand Allah, or more. You know? So I just, uh, just it encourages yeah, you a lot. Subhanallah. Yeah. Allah yeah. barakallah. Thank you so much for taking this time out in your yeah, last cool. few days before you head off. 
really appreciate it. Thank you. Hopefully, people will benefit it, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll have you back on soon in the future. Inshallah. Barakallah. Jazakallah khair, Imran, for having me. Um, so, what do you think about. Cut Subhanakallah, Rabbi Hamdi, Ashadu, and La ilaha illa, and Astaghfirullah, Tuwilik, Salaam Alaikum.